Questions to Zacchaeus and to us. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 12. The Queen was coming to town and one family saw it as a very special moment. The children were collected early from school and they dashed off to be there in time. Crowds were lining the roads. So uh, mum and dad suggested that the children climb up to the castle behind as part of the adventure playground. They'd get a better view from there. As the Queen got out and did a walk about, the, the throng of people got thicker and more dense. They glanced up and saw the elder child up in the castle. But where was the younger one? Once the crowd had passed, still no sign. The elder child returned, but not the youngest. Dad climbed up to the castle, but found uh, nobody there. Eventually they saw her coming in exactly the opposite direction from where they expected. She'd come from the front of the crowd, not the back. Where have you been? Her mother scolded her. But the scolding turned to laughter and incredulity when the child replied, well, I've never met the Queen before, so I thought I'd go and have a closer look. I've been right down to the front and I went up to her and I said hello and she smiled and said hello back. Well now she continues to do that sort of thing in life that little girl might go far. Talking about making the most of the moment. I wonder how many of us would have dared. How many of us live with deep regrets over lost moments in life. How many of us know that life might have been so different if only we'd seized the moment. Now Sunday school teachers love Zacchaeus, don't they? At least they love to act this story out and to sing about him, don't they? This little man who climbs up the tree to see Jesus gives us one of the most vivid stories in the whole of the Bible. And children, they can identify with Jesus. They often find themselves at the back of the crowd, unable to see. And many adults too can relate to him. They might want to get closer to Jesus, but find it embarrassing to do so. And like the child in my opening story, they're afraid of getting too close. But they do not want to miss the moment. They want to have a look-see, at least. And maybe we, like the parents of the child I mentioned, who went on to quiz her in detail about her brief moment with the Queen, maybe we would want to ask Zacchaeus some questions too. Questions like, Zacchaeus, why were you so desperate to meet Jesus? What did you expect to happen? How did you feel when Jesus invited himself to your home? Why were you so willing to give your money away. In what ways did meeting Jesus change your life? Perhaps we can try to find some answers to these questions. But more importantly, we need to recognise that the questions themselves might be more important than the answers. Those same questions might turn back on us. We might find we're called to give an answer to them too. So here we go. Why? Was Zacchaeus so desperate to see Jesus? That is a good question, isn't it? Some might want to ask uh, why that family wanted to see the Queen. And the answer is that uh, well, it was just an occasion that doesn't happen very often. It was an opportunity not to be missed. Perhaps that was the same for Zacchaeus. He'd heard the whisper that Jesus was passing through and he didn't want to miss the moment. Perhaps he was just simply curious. But something tells me it was a little more than that. I think Zacchaeus didn't simply come to see Jesus. We're told he climbed to see Jesus. You know, lots of storytellers make a lot about this. This chubby little man with his stumpy legs trying to pull himself up into a sycamore tree. It's comical and it's, and it's highly imaginative. But it also highlights the truth that Zacchaeus put a lot of effort into seeing Jesus. 
He was determined to get through, even though a vast host and a big crowd was preventing him. He pushed himself to climb above the distractions and above the obstacles that stood in his way. He would not let other people and their opinions stop him. He would not let the demands of work and a busy schedule stop him. I mean, he could have sat back and said, so what? And while the crowd rushed to see this backwards preacher, well, he might have taken the opportunity for some downtime to offer at home, going to enjoy a DVD on his brand new 50-inch 4K TV, complete with superb surround sound, while he relaxed in the jacuzzi, drinking champagne, reveling in his good fortune. He might have scoffed at those who needed religion as a crutch to soften their poverty, He'd done well for himself, after all. What need did he have of God? Well, the truth was a whole lot. Like many who have all the riches they could ever dream of, Zacchaeus knew well that it did not satisfy. TV ads for lottery rollover jackpots would have made him laugh cynically, for he knew what an empty prize that could be. A home full of goods, but empty of love and friendship. A house built on the slippery foundation of the exploitation of others, and every day a hateful glance from a neighbour would remind him just how much he has sold out. Zacchaeus, I would think, was a very lonely man, fully aware of the emptiness of his life and perhaps hoping for a change. Perhaps he had heard that this man Jesus had befriended other tax collectors just like him. Surely it was worth a try. And do you, like Zacchaeus, ever feel desperate to spend time with Jesus? Are you prepared to put in the effort to not give in at the first battle, to climb over the obstacles and to push aside all that crowds and distracts. Our second question, what did Zacchaeus expect to happen? There he was, up a tree, hiding in the branches, but for what? That's another good question, isn't it? What did he expect to happen? What might he have dreamed could have happened? Because I think what happened actually came as a complete surprise to him. The crowds, they were furious about it, showing just what society's expectations of what right and proper was. If they could have known that 2,000 years later the name of Zacchaeus would be known to millions of people the world over, whereas theirs would be well and truly forgotten, they would have fumed all the more. Good people, you see, they don't have anything to do with sinners. They shun them, don't they? And, and God, God doesn't have anything to do with sinners. He rejects and punishes them, or so they thought. Certainly they would not have expected this preacher man to look up to this man hiding in the tree and say, Hey, Zach, come down. I'm coming to your house for tea. Zach, I'm choosing you to be my friend. They, and perhaps Zacchaeus himself, expected something different. They would have expected judgment, not grace, denouncement, not acceptance, rejection, not choice. Do you remember the now classic story of Nicky Cruz, the New York gang leader who crossed paths with the evangelist David Wilkerson? And what was the deciding point for Nicky? Well, he'd already been hit hard by a barrage of bombs lobbed out by the man who just kept searching him out to tell him, Jesus loves you, Nicky. But the final assault came at a rally when the gang who had just come along for a laugh were asked, yeah, quite surprisingly, to take up the offertory. Take the offertory. Thieves and extortionists all their lives, they really thought they'd got it made. Until that is, they suddenly realised what was happening. Somebody 
for once in their lives had given them a chance to be decent. Somebody had believed in them. And Nicky, for one, was going to rise to that challenge. And by the power of the Spirit at work in him, it was only a short step to a life-changing conversion, an encounter with Christ and his love. He spent the rest of his life as a preacher and evangelist, trying to tell others about this. Like Zacchaeus, Nicky was so used to rejection and being told he was no good, perhaps even especially by himself, that God's belief in him and God's choice of him, shown in the invitation to take up the offertory, completely bowled him over and led to a transformation of his life. Neither Nicky nor Zacchaeus up in the tree got what they expected. What do you expect from Jesus? Has Jesus ever taken you by surprise? Have you known his wonderful grace and forgiveness? Our next question, how did Zacchaeus feel when Jesus invited himself to his home. Do you know, when I was a child, one of the moments I hated most at school was that moment we were told to line up in PE. Two of the best footballers were chosen as captains and, and then one by one they would call out the names of the ones they wanted on their team. And you can guess, I was never the first to be chosen. In fact, I was almost always amongst the last. I stood there pleading with my eyes to not be the last, but usually a reluctant shrug of the shoulders from the captain when my name was called out revealed it was only because someone had to choose me. Nobody really wanted me on their team. I was the one who was usually playing left back in the changing rooms. And you can imagine it scarred me for life. But then one day, I think I was in the fifth form, I was on form, and I was, I was playing a particularly good match. Can you imagine the delight I had to overhear the captain of the school football team teach, turning to the teacher and saying, he's quite good, isn't he, sir? Do you think we should ask him to play on Saturday? Well, my heart soared. And even though I was not asked to play on Saturday, something good happened inside. And a million rejections were healed in that moment. Someone had chosen me. How else can we imagine that Zacchaeus felt when Jesus chose him, of all people, to be his host? But more importantly, that what Zacchaeus felt was what he did. Full of joy, he hurried down and welcomed Jesus. He was not going to let the moment pass. He was going to seize it as enthusiastically as he could, and he was going to act on what he found. Jesus' choice of Zacchaeus, like David Wilkinson's choice of Nicky Cruz to take the offertory, it had a very profound effect upon him. The choice delighted him, but it also challenged him. It was a choice that gave him a new beginning, a moment to rise to, an opportunity to become the person that Jesus believed him to be. If he was in the team, he was going to show himself worthy of his place. So Zacchaeus stands up and he makes a grand declaration. Half of what he owes, he gives to the poor, and everyone he has cheated, he will pay back four times over. Zacchaeus is determined to make restitution as lavishly as the love has been shown to him in that wonderful acceptance by Jesus. No doubt that would leave him in very reduced circumstances, but he doesn't care. He's found something far more valuable. 
Now, I don't know if you've noticed, because we usually read them as two quite separate stories, but the story of Zacchaeus follows almost immediately on from the story of Jesus meeting with another rich man, a certain rich young ruler. That's a tragic story, and when you read it, you can feel Jesus' heart breaking for the young man who so wants to be a disciple, but who walks away because he cannot part with his wealth. How hard it is for rich men to enter the kingdom of God, Jesus declared. It's much harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Well, who then can be saved, the people asked him. What is humanly impossible is possible for God, Jesus replied. For those of us who are very aware that we are part of the rich world, with an economy that is often propped up by the exploitations of others in the rest of the world, for those of us who are aware that to some extent at least we've sold out to wealth and consumerism and lived our lives at other people's expense, The story of Zacchaeus and his discovery of a wonderful freedom, of acceptance and of joy, well, that can only bring hope. The story of the rich young ruler leaves us terrified. The story of Zacchaeus brings hope. Why? Because here we see what God can do through an encounter with Jesus. Here the impossible has happened. The rich man has come into the kingdom. The camel has gone through the eye of the needle. A son of Abraham has been recognised and the lost has been found and saved. When was the last time you felt like the new Zacchaeus? He seemed so thrilled to bits to to be the Zacchaeus that God believed he could be. When was the last time you delighted in the fact that by his grace you can actually change? Yes, you have the freedom to do so if you're prepared to grab that opportunity. When did you last step out into that freedom? Doing what is necessary to be the change you long to see. And why not now? There's a sense of urgency in the whole story that we've just read. Zacchaeus is hurrying to welcome and he makes no delay in putting things right. All that is set in the context of the fact that we're told Jesus came to Jericho and was passing through. If Zacchaeus had not acted to seize that moment, Would it have been missed forever? Today is one of God's most precious gifts and it may never be repeated. Now is the time, the scriptures say, do not delay. Could it be that salvation will come to your house today? Amen.